If you've had trouble growing food in the past, this is going to be one of the most helpful videos for you. And believe it or not, everything you see is basically the same thing. It's off-grid hydroponics, or Cracky Hydroponics, named after Dr. Bernard Cracky. He did a lot of research on it back in the day, and when the internet started coming around, people started referring back to his research, and we all called it Cracky Hydroponics. Now he's got a channel on YouTube called Grow Cracky. If you haven't subscribed to that, you need to go check it out. There's little subtle differences in the different ways I'm growing. And a lot of people always ask, what's the best way? And to me, there's no best way. I like to do things a lot of different ways. See, I want all of you to grow your food. And we all have different circumstances. We have different environments we're growing in, different financial abilities, different physical abilities. So whether you're growing in these big totes or buckets, or a little downspout or milk jug, even a mason jar, there's something for everyone. Now basic cracking hydroponics is not that difficult. It's putting plants into a nutrient solution. So once you find your container, you just drill some holes in it, put your nutrients in it, and stick a plant in it. After that, it's pretty much set it and forget it for plants like lettuce and herbs. For plants like tomatoes and peppers, you're going to need to refill it once in a while. So we'll talk about the different containers, but first let's talk about the nutrients because that's where everyone has a question. So I'll do a little screenshot of this. You can pause it, copy it down. But basically, this is what I've been using for about 10 years, and it works. Is 12 grams of master blend 41838 tomato fertilizer. 12 grams of calcium nitrate 15.500. And 6 grams of magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. Now a lot of people say that hydroponic nutrients are expensive. And if you buy it in liquid form, I agree. But for 5 gallons of nutrient solution, this is 12 grams of the 41838 Master Blend. This is 12 grams of calcium nitrate. This is six grams of Epsom salt. So to make a five gallon bucket, this is all you need. Now if you see one of my towers with three buckets, each one holds three and a half gallons. So that's a little over 10 gallons. You only need two of these to fill up that entire tower. A calcium nitrate, this is five pounds. Epsom salt, this one six pounds. Out of one pound, you'll get 45 portions of this. So out of this five pound container, you're gonna get over 200 five gallon buckets. It's about a thousand gallons. And if you really wanna save some money, Master Blend, I'm buying 25 pound bags. That's gonna last you a while. Now I've got a video on how I mix mine and there's been a lot of controversy over the years but basically I'm doing a little bit different right now. I'm just taking a five gallon bucket and putting my calcium nitrate into it, filling it up about halfway and stirring and that will dissolve. Then I dump in my master blend and Epsom salt and fill it up the rest of the way. Now I've seen a lot of people take the different components and make a concentrated liquid and then take that and measure it out each time which you can do that if you like but I just keep mine like this. Now one thing, if you're in a humid area like I am, calcium nitrate, if you leave the bag open, will absorb moisture out of the air and it'll turn solid as a rock. When I open mine, I always toss a couple of these desiccant packets in it. You keep it sealed up when you're not using it. I guess if you did make a liquid concentrate, that would take care of that problem. So that might be the way to go, who knows. Now, just about any container will work. And you see me out there with totes and buckets and milk jugs and homemade water beds. Now, if this is out in the weather, 
like the totes, I have that under a cover. And you don't need a greenhouse. I had a leftover canopy from when we used to do arts and crafts fairs. I took the canopy off and put greenhouse plastic on the top. This one's got a little fiber woven into it, so it makes it stronger, and it doesn't block out the light. So these have the holes right on the top. Now if the totes were out in the weather, the rain would flood the top, everything would go right inside. You get a lot of water going in and diluting your nutrient solution. Now I did this for many years and after a hard rain I would just come out and just dump some out, give it some more nutrients if it needed and it worked fine for me. Some people don't like to do that so I put this cover over it. So some people might not want to build a canopy so I came up with the bucket system and we put the holes in the side of the buckets. This way when it rained it didn't seep right in through the top. Now we have the buckets right out in the open. Now I'm kind of partial to this because the ones under the canopy never get wet. That cuts down on a lot of disease, but I think the plants still need to get a little bit of rain on them once in a while. So the ones that are out in the weather are basically mimicking what happens in nature. They get the nutrients that they need. They only use a fraction of the water compared to a traditional garden. Way less fertilizer because there's no runoff. And the plants themselves are still in the wind and rain, which is part of nature. So if you're new here, let's go through the basic principles of cracky hydroponics or off-grid hydroponics. So we're going to draw our container. This can be a tote, this can be a bucket, downspout, whatever you like, a milk jug. We're going to fill it with our nutrient solution. Now I like to fill it to about an inch from the top. And you put your plant in. All right, in the very beginning, the plant's roots are covered by the nutrient solution. Most plants, you don't want to cover up any of the stem. Your plant will probably rot and die. A few exceptions are basil, tomato, mint, or any plant that you can take a cutting and stick it in a glass of water and let it root. But other plants, you want to keep the stem out and just the roots in the nutrient solution. Now you just leave it. And when we first do this, if these guys are small, it takes weeks for this to start to go down. And as the water level starts to drop, these roots will continue to grow, sucking up the water and nutrients. Up here, in this little area, between the water level and the top, there's a little damp area. And the plant's going to grow tiny little root hairs. These absorb oxygen. Now the basic cracking principle is to let this continue to drop and by the time it uses up the nutrient solution you've got a mature plant like lettuce. Now if you have a smaller container or you're growing plants that take longer to mature you're gonna end up refilling. Now here's where a lot of people come into trouble in my opinion. They wait for this level to go way down. They'll wait for it to go down here and then they'll refill it all the way back up to here. And to me, I don't think the plant likes change like that because this doesn't happen overnight. And the plant's getting used to this environment and the water level's dropping, it's forming more air roots and it's dropping and it's known it's got to go deeper for the water and all of a sudden you can come back and you fill it all the way back up. Now if this happens in nature, all of the roots get wet but then it all drains into the soil. In hydroponics, it doesn't have anywhere to drain. So you're refilling it and now this plant's having to reset. So what I like to do is I tell people there's a little Goldilocks area. And I keep it between half and three quarters. So once it initially drops down to this little area, I don't never let it go down below half. And I don't never fill it back up above three quarters. Now if you want to get a little more industrious, Some people attach a float valve, so when it drops below a certain level, it refills it. Now you can see from my yard, I've got containers all over the place, and I would have to have hundreds of feet of tubing running to a reservoir somewhere. To me, I like to keep it simple. This is something you can do if you've only got three or four containers, you can daisy chain them all together. Works good. So that's the basic concepts of what I'm doing out there, and even though you see like a bucket tower or totes or milk jugs or downspouts or whatever I'm growing 
it's still the same basic systems. And like I said, there is no best way. It's what's best for you. So figure out your growing conditions, your environment, how much you got to spend, how much time and energy you have to put into it, and then find out what works best for you. It might take a little bit of experimenting, but that's part of the fun. All right? Hope that helps. Live to inspire. Keep on growing. Be the change. Go grow some food. <laughs>